Hey, this is Pamela Raymond Schneider. I'm the retail editor for Blue Book Services, and this is the Produce Reporter Week in Review. Greg, we're back on Zoom. Who wants to watch another video? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I have spent a lot of time on Zoom this week. Uh, my time yeah. was spent at Brandstorm, and you were also there as well. Uh, but then there was there was the PMA webinar and Tomato Week. What is Tomato Week, and is it like Shark Week? I didn't see anyone die, but that's about the same percentage as sharks, technically. Uh, Tomato Week was good. It was put on by the Fresh Produce Association of the Americas in Nogales, Arizona. And they, the main message was tomatoes did a great job in 2020, and there's no reason to think they won't in 2021. It's an incredible, versatile produce item. I would say fruit or vegetable, depending on how you want to do it. But it, it's really versatile and it can be used fresh, it can be used as an ingredient, so it fits in perfectly with every lifestyle and that's one of the reasons they're having success. Another reason they're having success is the Romas are, out of Mexico are really doing well. They're, they're at a lower price point, they're high quality, they're almost year-round and so I suspect part of their messaging was we have a great product coming out of here and let us show you some stats. I will. I have a story Friday that links to a University of Arizona research project that shows statistics of the tomato market over the past few years. And it's interactive and I encourage our readers to check out that story and go to that link. It's really cool. You can, you can see a lot of the story, not only what happened in 2020, but what's happened in previous years. And as you would expect, Mexican tomatoes farewell. Oh, it just kind of, it, it came up and was it was something that I was like, what is Tomato Week and why are they doing it? So it, it seems kind of fascinating that, that they're leveraging um, the ability to do a virtual conference like this because would they have had an in-person Tomato Week um, and expected people to fly in especially, and, and cover this? Um, I, I mean, maybe, but this was an easy sell to do it virtually. Um, so that, I think it's a fantastic idea and it sounds like some really fascinating stuff was presented. So way to take advantage of a situation that um, might not have been there a year ago. Right, it's a way to uh, have programming beyond just their membership. Their membership is very strong and, and very cohesive and so it's still important for them to hear from each other. But when it's virtual like that, it's it's easy to hear from other people and, and let other people from all around the country participate. The only problem with not going in person is you don't get to play golf around there, which hopefully in November. I know, right? Hopefully. And actually, um, I attended Brandstorm this week. And if you recall last year, it was in my hometown here in, of Austin, Texas. But I feel like the virtual pivot for Brandstorm was really strong. Um, they had record attendance and people were really engaged and the content, we just got off Zoom um, for the final wrap up fireside chat with uh, Cindy Jewell and Roger Pepperell and Mark Munger. And it was a fantastic conversation about all of the changes and all of the um, strengths that we've seen in marketing and going forward, what can we see? Um, and, and it was a great conversation. And throughout the whole thing, it was all great conversations. It was. It was, it was really cool. Uh, the, the last one we heard was excellent in the fact that it touched on a number of subjects. And it was kind of able to sum up what people had heard throughout the week. The importance of digital marketing, marketing the importance of flavor and products to keep people coming back to the, the, the category as a whole, but each individual category. I mean, every, it seems like every item in there is starting to emphasize flavor more than they did a decade ago. And that's a real positive thing for the produce industry and hopefully increasing consumption. So some of my key takeaways from uh, Brandstorm were about using digital strategically because we will all be in person soon in um, whether we're going into stores or we're going to trade shows, Viva Fresh coming up next at the end of the month. Um, and, and one of the important things that I saw was just something simple like shifting focus groups from this meet downtown at lunchtime and try to get, you know, urban professionals to, to take off work to go do a focus group versus doing consumer panel research 
um, by sending people product at home. Um, and, and what's great about it is that you can get rid of that um, 12 angry men kind of uh, group think where one person influences the rest of the group. Um, you can just mute them on Zoom. And um, that way nobody else can hear what anyone else is saying about it. And it's, it's a better way to control it. And so oftentimes you get uh, better results and that's what marketers are finding. And it's you know oftentimes less costly than trying to field focus groups in person. That's just one small example of the key takeaways that uh, I, I found at Brainstorm this week. So I thought it was really a strength to have it in person, I mean, to have it digital but man, I'm getting tired of being on Zoom. <laughs> I am ready to see people again. Um, it's also hard to lock everything away. You can, you know, they they really emphasize shutting down your your cell phone and your computer and and putting it on uh, away mode or something like that, so you can lock in. And you can do that to a certain degree, but the reality is you're still at home. It's you're not there. I mean, you're, if your kid wants to interrupt you or your dog's going to bark, that still happens. And yeah, it just, there's still temptation to, to lose your focus. Yeah. I've got a kid on COVID lockdown right now. He can't go anywhere. I've got a dog. I've got all of this stuff. And I tried to explain it to him earlier today where it's like, when you go away to a trade show or you go away to a conference or even just a, you know, team meeting, you're there, you're engaged, you're part of it. I'm not somebody's mom. I'm not somebody's chef. I'm not doing the dishes. I'm not, you know, all, taking somebody to soccer practice. Um, and while I do appreciate the flexibility and the ability to pivot and do things digitally, I am really looking forward to being able to 100% focus on um, what I'm doing. And I feel like a lot of people in the industry, number one, you, you just miss people and you want to you wanna be around people because People are what makes this industry special, right? Uh, but the number two, you just be part of it and not have to think about anything else for a little while um, is a refreshing change. And I think we're all going to extra appreciate it when we get the chance to get out of the office again. And it's the chance meetings that, that you miss and you cannot replicate those working virtually. There's absolutely no way to, you can purposely seek someone out and have a conversation with them. But when there's 300 of you at a meeting, you're going to bump into people you know, and you're going to get information or make a connection that you weren't expecting. And you, you cannot, there's, there's, I have not found a way, I don't believe there is a way to replicate that digitally. Yeah, you can't run into somebody in an elevator um, in a scramble chat. I mean, you're a scramble chat, you're there. But yeah, everyone's like, you're still hey, seeing someone, but everyone else is hearing you. Yeah. So. It's not the same. Well, do you want to you hear my favorite stat of the week? Mm -hmm. It was courtesy of a workshop on holistic marketing from the CEO of Wild Hive. Her name is Allison Beadle. And she used a study that showed that 70% of adults aged 25 to 34 believe that sustainably sourced foods are generally healthier than other foods. And so I, I wanted to double check with her. So I had an email exchange with her even after that to confirm my suspicion that there is in fact no connection between those two things. Right. But want, we have the most educated consumer with the best, best access to data and where your food comes from. And so often, at least I'm going to pick on this 25 to 34 group, they only hear what they want to hear. They don't actually want to hear the data. They just want to hear what makes them feel good. So as marketers, I've always if said- what they want? Yeah, let, if that's what they want to hear, don't lie to them, but don't correct them. <laughs> Show them data that, that does both. And that's what, that's what uh, the CEO told me. Uh, tell people how you're sustainable, tell people how you're healthy. Let them make the connection in their head. And they are, they're already doing that. So as long as you're not telling them that outright, uh, you know, you give them the people what they want and- And, and charge them a little more for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, on that note, that's it for the Produce Reporter Week in Review. If you are not getting the Produce Reporter newsletter, you need to go to produceboobook.com and sign up. 